Hello everybody, in this video we will go through an installation from start to finish and discuss and explain all the decisions that were made uh, throughout. So actually about a year ago this uh, client came to me and said he was going to build a house outside of Karat and we talked a lot about uh, what was good for the solar, how the house, uh, you know, if there was any changes that he should do or what was applicable for his house. So we just, just talked about roofs and system size, equipment, everything. And then uh, when the house was finished, we did a survey with our eSound manager. Here you can see a drawing he made with the garage up in the upper left. And then we have a small room here. And then the initial plan was to dig a trench and put in cables to go from the system here over to the main breaker panel in the house. So that was the initial plan. The roof is two parts. You have the main roof, which is CPAC uh, ceramic tiles, and you have a porch, which is metal sheet. So here's the porch. Uh, the porch is about seven, eight uh, degrees slope facing south. And the main roof is about 35 degrees maybe even 40, it's quite steep. Uh, so then we had to make a plan, where did we want to put the panels? Well, the first thing was actually, obviously, how many panels can we put here on the metal sheet? Because the metal sheet is the best place to put the panels. Uh, why is that? Because optimal slope is about 15 degrees, if we think about production all throughout the year. And this is a little bit less than that but it's still much closer to optimal than this. So this will give a better production throughout the year. How, how, here you can see it very clearly, like the difference in slope. And here you can see that uh, the metal sheet is good quality and it's gonna hold up the panels. So here we see the main breaker panel. Nothing special about that. This is a good main breaker panel. Everything was done correctly by the, by the electrician, uh, which is not often, not always the case. Uh, there is a little bit of space here. Um, what we knew very fast was that we would have uh, more panels than, than uh, would fit on the metal sheet. So then the question is, should we go east, west or south for the remaining panels? So we decided on putting everything to the, to the south. And here, here you can see a very nice overview of that. Uh, so here we, is 10 panels. That's the maximum we could put on the metal sheet. This is the main house. So in the beginning we were talking about 16 panels. Six on the top. So we, if we look at the, the width there, we see that it's going to be okay with one row, but we cannot do more than one row because there's no room. Even putting um, landscape uh, format and putting some panels in landscape is not really going to work because there is a ledge here. So you're going to get shadow from the ledge uh, on the panel. So you want as much space from this ledge out to the panels. So that's why you just can't put landscape, uh, anything in landscape here. It's going to be too close. 12 meters. We could put 12 panels, but then we have to frame outside. We don't like to do that because, first of all, it looks ugly. Um, and also cleaning is easier if you can walk around. So I think 10 panels on this uh, roof is uh, really the best. Uh, the customer wanted us to put uh, install a charger um, to the garage because he wanted to buy a hybrid car later on. Uh, a hybrid car is normally charged with a normal socket, but what we call a power socket, uh, which has a special protective uh, socket that's able to take a lot of uh, amp. And also, of course, we connected the proper size cabling so that the cables would be able to sustain the electricity going to the car. 
Uh, that's very important. Um, so we did that for a customer, included that in the quote. We often do things like this. Uh, and I think that's a good idea for customers because a lot of this kind of work is somewhat special. And you, if this is done not correctly by, by a local worker, then you can have a lot of problems and fire and everything. So this is how it should be done with a protective pipe that goes under, then above, just in case if there's water, you know, this is 100% waterproof. But the junction box is not, if this is submerged, then it's dangerous. That's why it's above the, above the, on the wall. Could put it even higher. Uh, that can also be judged uh, like, is the house uh, prone to flooding or not, and things like that. So the, the junction box uh, can obviously sustain rain and things like that, but if it's submerged, uh, it, it cannot. But this can, so that's why it's like that. Here we see uh, the installation on the way. Peter is taking the pic picture with the drone. You can see the controller there. And the framing for the lower panels have come up already. Here you can see that we actually changed from the planning phase to the installation. That instead of doing 16 panels, we ended up with uh, 20. That's just uh, something that can be changed when we uh, plan and talk to the customer what he's going to use and things like that. The benefit of doing 20 immediately on this system is that then you cannot put more panels. You are finished on the roof. This system, the inverter, cannot handle more than 20 panels. That's the maximum. So that's the nice thing. Instead of putting 18, for example, um, of course, if you know that you will not need more than 18, you should not put more. But if you're a bit unsure, just add on two because the cost of adding on two is so little that it really is beneficial to just go to the max immediately. So one advantage by having uh, all panels to the south but in two different angles is that these panels is on one string and these panels is on another string. So then in the winter time like um, um, October, November, December, January, February, these panels will actually be more correct angled compared to these. So that's actually a benefit of these panels is that uh, in that time of the year, these will actually be more correct angle. So that's pretty cool. It shouldn't be like a very big factor because obviously in that time we normally use less air condition. So the, overall it's better to have panels like this uh, in terms of overall production throughout the whole year. Uh, but when we have an installation like that we may as well look at, okay, when we have this configuration what is the advantage of that? And one of the advantages is definitely that you have, uh, in the winter season, you have a more correct angle on this string. So that's, that's okay. So here you see the combiner box uh, with all the safety equipment for the system. Uh, you have the AC breaker, you have the surge protection for AC, and then you have two breakers for DC, one for each string. So you can close one string if you want. And you should do that when you go on vacation. And if the load is very low, close one string. That's my general advice, just to reduce the work that the inverter has to do. Um, because if the system is producing a lot of energy and there's no load, of course it can handle it, but because we have export control on all these systems, there's no electricity going out to the grid, the system has to reduce, has to work really hard. Not, But it, it's capable of doing it without any problems, but it's just in general better to cl close one string if you don't use the energy, just to make it easier for the inverter. Uh, this system produces uh, seven, 8,000 watts on the maximum. It has uh, available more than 9,000 watts in panel power, but because the 
the angle is not 100% optimal all the time and of course in the morning and afternoon there's the angle is coming from the side all of that uh, makes it so you will never see 9500 watts even though you have it in the rating of the panels and that's why we say when we talk about panels we talk about kilowatt peak because if a panel is 470 watts that's the peak that's the absolute maximum it can output but it never does that because you have loss in the inverter loss in the cables loss in dust loss in clouds all of these things so that's why we always put up a lot more panels than the power that we really need so if uh, the customer needs 5000 watts we often put 7000 watts of panels on the roof or even more now for this system we can put even more than that because uh, this system is able to charge the battery with 5000 watts at the same time as giving 5000 watts to the load so that's why we can go as high as 9000 watts of panels or more but you cannot do more than 10,000 watts of panels that's not the inverter is not able to handle that so so that's that's a really cool feature with this uh, system is that it's able to uh, act as a 10 kilowatt system basically when it's charging the battery so that's why this system is such unbelievable value for money and also considering the quality and the low failure rate and the good warranties the return of investment on this system is really really good so i hope you enjoyed that video guys um, at the end here i want to uh, recommend another youtube channel that has uh, similar topics uh, it's called eco house thailand it's a great channel talk about solar talk about off-grid talk about EV cars and charging EV cars even in off-grid situations so I definitely recommend that channel so you guys can get uh, even a better picture of what's going on with solar and EVs in Thailand